Okay, in this lecture we're going to begin talking about uh, rational functions. These are functions that are built from polynomials. All right, now remember, a polynomial, all right, is a function of this form. This is an nth degree polynomial, all the way down to, say, uh, a1x1 plus a0, that's the constant term. Now, a rational function is a polynomial, all right, so this is a polynomial on top here, and it's divided by another polynomial. Now, these polynomials may, in fact, be different in degree, all right, but they certainly have this kind of form. It could be a quadratic over a cubic or a cubic over a quad quadratic, um, but the point is that they are polynomials, okay? The other very important consideration is that this polynomial q of x can't be equal to zero, because if it was equal to zero, I'd be trying to divide by zero, and we can't do that. Right, so we're going to begin by graphing a very simple one. Uh, you'll know that one of our basic um, functions was the uh, reciprocal function. And the reciprocal function was y equals 1 on x. And you may remember what it looked like. It looked something like this. Um, I'll try and do it roughly here. All right, and uh, in here. Down like so. All right, this was y is equal to 1 on x. All right, now notice that x couldn't be equal to 0 here. All right, and so this y-axis, which is where x is equal to 0, is like a brick wall that can't go through it. Now, the other thing is that um, y can't be 0 either, because if I switch this around, I'd get x is equal to 1 on y, so clearly y can't be 0 either. And so this x-axis is like a wall as well, so it has to fit in here. So if I have a 3 here, this is like, uh, if I have y equals 3 on x, this is like 3 times 1 on x. And so this is uh, stretching it. All right, vertically. Okay, and so uh, if we do that, uh, for example, instead of going through 1, 1, it'd go through 1, 3. So it goes through this point here. And if I put uh, x is um, 3, all right, it goes uh, through 1. Okay, so really this thing is just doing this. Okay. And, of course, we know this is symmetrical here, so, of course, it's going to go through... Um, when x is negative 1, it'll be negative 3. Okay, and uh, when x is um, negative 3, it'll be negative 1. And so it goes through here like this. All right, and this way and this way. And, of course, we can see what the domain is, all right? The domain, all right, is going to be um, 0, but we can't have 0, all right, to infinity. And, of course, um, also we have negative infinity to 0. So combining these together, I have negative infinity to 0, union with 0 to infinity, okay? And, of course, the range right, is going to be the same. Like so. All right, so that's a very simple rational function. Now, a couple of things to talk about here is one is this x-axis here. We couldn't break through there. This y-axis, we couldn't break through here. See, these are what we call asymptotes. All right, and in this case, the y-axis is a vertical asymptote. So it's like a wall that can't go through. And it has an equation here, of course, which is x is equal to 0, because this is the value that x can't actually have. Uh, here we also have, this is an asymptote as well. And this one's a horizontal one. And, and of course, the equation will be y equals 0, because this is the one that we had here that y couldn't be 0. 
Now, that's a very simple case. Now, what we want to discuss is um, asymptotes in more general uh, rational um, functions. So remember that a rational function is a polynomial divided by a polynomial. You'll see up here that the the horizontal, uh, sorry, the vertical asymptote came from the fact that x cannot be equal to zero. So in other words, a vertical asymptote comes from finding when q of x is equal to zero. All right. So in other words, this is what we have to do: find when q of x is equal to zero, and has the form it's vertical x equals some a. Okay. All right. So uh, that's uh, how we go about finding a uh, the vertical asymptote. Okay. All we have to do is equate the bottom function to zero, solve it for x, and that will give us the form x equals a as being our vertical asymptote. Right. Now the horizontal asymptote comes from looking at the degrees of the polynomials. Okay. All right, now we have two cases. Case one, if the degrees or degree of um, P of X, okay, equals, okay, um, the degree of Q of X, then, right, the horizontal asymptote right is going to be all right the y is equal to all right because remember it's horizontal all right the coefficient of the leading term Right of p of x divided by the coefficient of the leading term of q of x. All right, so in other words, let's suppose uh, that we have. Um, a polynomial of degree um, 3 on the top and degree 3 on the bottom, then all we do is we take the coefficient <coughs> of the leading term in the top and divide it by the coefficient of the leading term in the bottom and make that y equal to, to uh, that ratio and we have what the horizontal asymptote is. Right, now case, <coughs> case 2, right, if in fact, all right, um, P of X has a lower degree than Q of X, then Y equals zero is the asymptote. In other words, the X axis horizontal asymptote. Okay, now we have one other kind of asymptote, and that comes from, and I guess we could call this case three, and that is when, all right, the um, degree of uh, P of X is greater than the degree of Q of X. This produces what's called an oblique asymptote. In other words, it produces a non-horizontal line, a non-vertical line, and it'll have the form a form y equals mx plus c. And we'll show you how to actually do that. The way we do it, of course, is going to be to divide um, the uh, lower degree polynomial into the higher degree polynomial. So let's have a look at this example and put these into practice. Right, so first of all, in this part A, we can write f of x equals x plus 2 over x minus 3 by x plus 3. 
Right, now the vertical asymptote is fairly easy to find. In fact, there's two. It's when x minus 3 equals 0, which implies, of course, it's x equals 3. And, of course, it's going to be when x plus 3 equals 0, which implies it's going to be when x is equal to negative 3. So we've got two vertical asymptotes. Right, now notice uh, for the degrees here, this one is degree 1, and this one is degree 2. So we have case um, 2, which says that P of X has a lower degree, because here's P of X. And this one is Q of X has a higher degree, so that tells me that Y equals 0, so the horizontal asymptote is Y equals 0. Okay. Right, so that's how we do that one. Now, if you look at part B, first of all, let's look at the vertical asymptote. Now, we have 1 here now. Notice it's when 2x plus 3 is equal to 0. It can't be equal to 0, but um, we're going to find the asymptote, which is finding the x value that we can't have. So 2x plus 3 is equal to 0 implies that x is equal to negative 3 over 2. So that would be my vertical asymptote. Now, the horizontal asymptote, notice that the degree of P of X, its degree here is 1, and of Q of X here, the degree is 1. So we have a, um, we actually have case uh, 1, if the degree of P of X equals the degree of Q of X, then we take the leading term, which is in this case, so here's our horizontal asymptote. Right, is going to be y equals, take the leading coefficient, which is 4, divided by the leading coefficient, which is 2, and I end up with y is equal to 2 as being the horizontal asymptote. Right, if we look at uh, part 3, Right, notice here's our P of X, which of course is degree 2. This is uh, Q of X, which is degree uh, 1. So we have case 3 here, an oblique asymptote. And so what we do is we uh, get our X take 2, and we divide it into our 2X squared plus 0X. Don't forget to put the 0 because we don't have an X up here, plus 3. Okay. And, of course, we uh, what do we do? Uh, multiply x by to get 2x squared, we'll get 2x. So I'll end up with 2x squared minus 4x. And we'll be subtracting here. That gives us me 0. And this will be 4x. And we bring down the 3. What will multiply x by to get 4x? Well, it'll be 4. And I'll end up with 4x um, minus 8. I'll be subtracting, <coughs> and of course, this will give me 0, and this will give me 11. Now, I'm not so worried about the 11 remainder. What I'm interested in is this guy up here, and this is going to be my oblique asymptote, which will be 2x plus 4, okay, is going to be an oblique asymptote, okay? And of course, here, this will give us the vertical asymptote. And that, of course, is x is equal to 2, because of 2 that causes this denominator to go to 0. So there are the three uh, different kinds of asymptotes. How to find the vertical one, we have to put q of x equal to 0 and solve for x, and we'll get a x equals some value. Horizontal, two cases. If the degrees are equal, then just look at the ratio of the leading coefficients, top and bottom, and that will give me y is equal to that value, and that will be the horizontal asymptote. Uh, if they um, have a degree on the top which is lower than the degree of the polynomial on the bottom, then just the y-axis, y equals 0, is going to be the asymptote. Case 3, when the degree of the uh, 
top polynomial is greater than the degree of the uh, lower polynomial, we are going to get an oblique asymptote, which is some sort of uh, non-vertical, non-horizontal straight line. It's at an angle, that's what oblique means. And uh, there's some examples to, uh, to actually show that.